This episode of Goosebumps Crew is sponsored by Stevie Wicks Candle Company, specializing in quality made scented candles. Link in the description, but more on that later. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to the Goosebumps Crew Podcast. I'm your host, Isaiah Vargas, also known as the Goosebumps Channel on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. And once again, I'm joined by my Goosebumps cohorts, Bjorn Panwick, Goosebumps Aussie fan, Nick Shaw Shawin, and Micah, the ultimate Goosebumps man. We're back to talk some more Goosebumps as usual. And today, we're doing something a little different. We usually talk about full topics, sort of general stuff in uh, as a whole. Uh, but tonight, we're gonna focus on something in particular. We're gonna do an episode retrospective on the very first two-parter episode of the Goosebumps 90 show. Welcome to Dead, uh, not welcome to Dead House, welcome to Camp Nightmare. I'm sorry, I'm messing up already. Uh, we're gonna be talking about Welcome to Camp Nightmare, uh, which is the fourth episode of the first season based on the ninth book. And uh, to do this task, we need some help. And tonight we have a very special guest joining us tonight. He played Billy in the episode. He's also been in other shows like Are You Afraid of the Dark? It's Kai Eric Erickson joining us tonight. Kai, welcome to the Goosebumps crew, and thank you for joining us tonight. Hey, thanks, guys. Pleasure yep. to be on. Absolutely. Well, like I said, we're going to be talking about Welcome to Camp Nightmare today. We're going to talk about the episode, and we're going to talk with Kai and his experience in working on the episode and in the episode. But first, as usual, we're going to get our news from the Goosebumps world. And first off, Enjoy the Ride Records just recently released the new Goosebumps Deluxe Vinyl Soundtrack. This is different from their original soundtrack that they released from Jack Lens. It has all the, or not all, but most of the music uh, from the Goosebumps 90s show. Now they have a new deluxe vinyl, which not only is two discs instead of one, it has a brand new, gloriously artistic sleeve. It looks absolutely incredible. It's glow in the dark, and it's got two discs with new 10 unreleased soundtracks that were not available on the first release. It's available on enjoytheriderecords.com, so you can go there and get yourself a copy. We got ourselves a copy. Uh, I believe me, Nick, and Bjorn all got copies, and you can, uh, you can get yourself one too because they're going fast, so go check those out. Next up, uh, Trick or Treat Studios recently released their 2024 catalog. They have a brand new line of Goosebumps merch coming out this year, including five new vinyl masks, and stuff like air fresheners, pins, book bags, figures, as we talked recently on the podcast as well. All this new stuff coming out, you're not gonna wanna miss it, so go sign up for Trick or Treat Studios newsletter to keep tabs on it for when those items come up for pre-order. I know certainly I will be probably snagging some of those masks because those look unbelievably cool. And then, uh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, I mean, like we all, when we all found out about those, we were like, which ones are we gonna yeah. get? Which ones are we gonna get first? <laughs> uh, and then Pretty finally, all of them, yeah. <laughs> and then oh, finally, uh, Goosebumps Dead of Night, Cosmic Forces uh, recently announced that Goosebumps Dead of Night will be coming to mobile. Uh, it will be on mobile devices. I do not know if it will be on both uh, the Apple Store and on Samsung devices, uh, but they have announced that there is a mobile version coming out soon, and it's actually kind of funny because the game actually spawned from a mobile game, so it's kind of coming full circle. So, uh, more info on that to come. We'll be keeping you updated with that as we go along. Alrighty, so now we're going to get into the main event tonight. We have Kai here to talk with us about the episode, Welcome to Camp Nightmare. Now, uh, Kai, before we do, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your career as an actor? Uh, well, I started acting when I was quite young, actually. I, my mom got me into modeling when I was like two years old, just local catalogs around Vancouver, things like that. And, um, and when I was about six, we somehow got involved in this horrible horrible fashion show with all these stage moms and it was just <laughs> chaotic and and i remember her turning to me going like do you even want to do this and i was like no i don't and, she said, okay. <laughs> and so we we went into uh to talk to my agent to tell him like hey we're we're done like you know not interested anymore and he goes you ever thought about acting and i was like no, but, you know, <laughs> he said, you might enjoy it. I said, oh, okay. And so, you know, I started out when, you know, back when I started, you kind of had to work your way up just like in any other job. So you started out as, as like a background actor, uh, that kind of 
gained you know gave you your onset experience and, and all of that and then you got like a small speaking role and then you get a co-star and then you get a guest star and then you get a lead role and um and i loved it i thought it was fantastic um it was you know i'm six years old and it's a chance to like skip school make money and hang out with adults all day it was great <laughs> absolutely i mean the life oh, of an yeah, actor man. is quite luxurious as a kid i remember uh uh, being a kid and being like, God, I wish I was an actor. <laughs> oh yeah, it was it was an awesome time, man. Like I, I did a bit of acting when I was a kid, like, but I did more like stage. Like I did a lot of musicals, like Bugs in the Lone, West Side Story, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I did try to get into the acting thing, but yeah, I, man, it just it just never took off for me, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, hey, I, I, my passion is also goosebumps, so at least I can do that one instead. There's always yeah. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's it. Well, that's, that's awesome. Exactly right. And uh, and then you got involved, obviously, with uh, Goosebumps. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Were you were you a fan of Goosebumps when you got assigned to the episode? Um, I I didn't know much about it. Uh, um, really? I had they had offered me a, a different episode, a different role, and I turned it down because I was uh, I was doing the commission at the time, and I was on break and I, I really just wanted to kind of relax and so we we actually didn't know anything about the show so we were like what's this Goosebumps show and and at the time you know I was about 16 or something when when I did the episode I can't remember how old I was uh, exactly but uh, you know I remember going it's like a kid show and I was like I started doing more adult stuff on the commission so I was like I don't really want to do a kid show and I just want to have a vacation and so we <laughs> said no and then they came back and they were like, we really want you to do the show. Um, we have a two part episode. And I was kind of like, hey, you know, we'll, we'll fly you out to Toronto and put you up. And like, OK, that sounds kind of fun. And and uh, they described it a little bit. And I was like, OK, well, you know, sounds good. And I somehow managed um, to fly out to Toronto, like by myself, you know, back back then there weren't as many like child labor law rules and right. union rules and things like that <laughs> yeah. so I managed to go like by myself and uh and it was great it was great you know put me up in a hotel and you know pick you up in the morning take you to work and it was uh, it was a really fun shoot it was a great shoot Oh, yeah, man. it's a it's a yeah, great it's episode. Um, let's talk My a little bit about episode. yeah. Let's talk a little bit about it. So as I said before, uh, this was the fourth episode of the first season. This came after Haunted Mask, Cuckoo Clock of Doom, and Girl Cried Monster. So we were well into uh, the first season by this point. People knew about it. People were uh, were hearing about it. It was getting popular. It was coming off the heels of. Um, a popular book series it was not as popular yet but it was really getting there um yeah but uh so this was the first two-parter episode of the show this was the first episode that would end off on a cliffhanger come back next week there's a new episode um yeah. and you played the main role billy now um in that episode so uh for those who do not know about the episode it's about a boy named billy who goes to a summer camp and all sorts of weird stuff starts happening there's a bunch of weird uh people working there the counselors are all mean and then one by one these kids start disappearing there's kids getting snake bites there's kids who are drowning getting mauled by wild animals and they start disappearing and billy is like what is going on what is happening and then eventually they start being like what are you talking about these people don't exist. Yeah. So and now he's like, am I going crazy yeah. or something like that? So that's the interesting thing about the episode because Goosebumps is mostly monster stories, ghosts, mm -hmm. goblins, that's, that, that sort of thing. There, there's a physical threat there. And yeah. there is one in the episode, but this is the first one that really kind of takes like a psychological aspect. It's, it's Billy being like, I know these people are actually hear these things happen but everyone's telling me that it's not so like what is going on i have to get to the bottom of it um so it's it's an episode that stands out a lot now uh obviously so you said that in this episode so you're the main character uh what was uh i guess would start what was the first scene that you had shot i if i remember correctly the first stuff we did was on the lake um um, I, I think it was it was some some of the stuff on the lake was the first stuff that we shot. Mm -hmm. um, I remember um, I remember there was a lot of waiting around uh, at the beginning of the lake stuff. Um, 
and uh, you know I think on the first day you know I mean we're going back a long long time I think first day a lot of it's just sort of prep too you're sitting there you, you know you're going over a lot of stuff um, the director uh, Ron Oliver is a fantastic guy I've worked with him a bunch of times since I still uh, talk to him he's 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 amazing mm -hmm. and, and uh, it's a ton of fun he was a ton of fun because you know every single day um, you know they picked me up the first couple of days to go to work and then you know Ron had a car so he's like well I'll, you know we you know we could drive together and we go and pick up like Jolt Cola which was super hard to find at the time and somehow we'd we get like cigars and so <laughs> we like sit <laughs> on the set in the time between oh my God. You know, Drinking Joel Cola, smoking cigars, <laughs> hanging out. It was a real good time. <laughs> Kid out in Toronto by myself. It was fantastic. Yeah. But uh, no, oh, I... great. So basically, on your first day, um, was obviously doing the lake stuff. So your first day was uh, Larry pushing you into the lake. That's what I understand. <laughs> so yeah, you got pushed in the lake on the first day yeah, of shooting. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> Be like, I, I, I think, think I think I they were like, get it over with on the first day. We'll, 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 you know, yeah. The hard stuff. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's a good scene oh. to bring up because, uh, as we said, so there's a lot of th this episode has a lot of uh presumed deaths. Nobody dies in this episode. It's all revealed. Oh, we'll get. Oh, hold on. We'll get to the end. That we'll get to that at the end. Um, but there's a lot of presumed Spoiler deaths now. in this. We're getting to the spoilers already. Blabbermouth over here. <laughs> um, <laughs> but regardless, so yes, this scene. So it's at the lake, and this is when two main characters are presumed dead. Um, but it's always funny because we. I mean, we we talked in past episodes about uh, how the Goosebumps show is can be pretty cheesy at times. It's a cheesy show. Um, sure. And sometimes you get those slight bits of goofiness that kind of eke in. And I will always laugh because even without the context of the ending, it's like, those guys aren't drowning. <laughs> and they're so obviously <laughs> sneaking under the boat. Like, they're right next to the boat. It's like, come on, guys. <laughs> if I were you well, in that situation, I'd be like, guys, like, stop, stop messing around. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> kids show, you can't be too scary with with uh, with kids shows. That's though, but... true, but it's something that's uh, it was always funny well, to me. Because as much as I love Goosebumps, and we've talked about this too, it's really funny to see the transition of the '90s shows where they were meant to be kids shows and scary. But you had Goosebumps, Erie, Indiana. But are you afraid of the dark? Push that envelope more than any of those other shows did. Yeah, yeah you were you were in an episode that a lot of people still get nightmares you, about. <laughs> like. Really, probably a lot of fans, I think, would probably say is the scariest episode. It's yeah. always between uh, Tale of Dead Man's Float and Tales of the Glass of Grinner. Like, those are the two that yeah. seem to be, like, in every fan's, like, world, like, their their gravity of their orbit. So yeah. it, it's interesting to see not just you, but other actors who went from Goosebumps to Are You Afraid of the Dark or vice versa. Yeah. Staying in the house, but Are You Afraid of the Dark wasn't afraid to push that envelope, though, for kids I, mean, I remember a lot of people and they've had nightmares about that episode you're in, so. yeah that, that monster in, uh, in are you afraid was 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 scary and i feel bad to this day about the poor guy being stuck in that thing because it was all latex and, <laughs> well and you're like, wet too around. like you're just like you're coming out of the water you got latex all over your body and then you're dripping wet too it's like oh <laughs> but, you know it's uh, funny, I the clip of, of are you afraid of the dark the other day so i i did see it you know not too long ago and i was like you know that is it is kind of a scary show for kids. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, back then it was like a rite of passage. You know, if you were a Canadian kid actor, you had to do Are You Afraid of the Dark? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, we've we've joked the in the past. It's think, like... Uh, who do we have? We had Alan, uh, I think, who's, who said it. Alan or Matt, uh, who we just had on. Alan DeSet. Uh, I don't know if you remember him or not, but I know he worked on like every episode of, of Goosebumps, but... I think he said that they used every kid in Canada for that show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. No, it's so weird. It's like, it, we were talking about this, we were joking about this in an earlier episode, but it's like, do you guys ever notice that, like, all of these shows that are quite similar to each other all were filmed in Canada? <laughs> yeah. It's like, we ever get any American horror anthology shows for kids? I don't think so. <laughs> well, I mean, no, it was only Canada. It was Canada, because I, uh, you know, uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark was in Montreal? and then Goosebumps was out in Toronto. And so, you know, and as a kid, I always loved to, to travel for work because it was like a paid vacation. You know, they'd oh, yeah. fly out, put you up. It was great fun. 
Absolutely. But uh, and uh, continuing on with the episode, um, so yeah, so we have that scene now. Uh, you were obviously the main kid, but we got a bunch of uh, we had a bunch of supporting actors that acted as like. Uh, you got like the friends that you're that Billy is with, and then you also got uh, some of the camp leaders. So you got Uncle Al, and then you got Larry. Uh, let's talk a little bit about those guys. So get in the film with the other actors. I guess we'll start with uh, let's start with Uncle Al because Uncle Al is one of those characters who I I, I don't remember who act who the actor was, but he was always one of those guys where I'm like, you have the beginning where he's like all nice and cheery, and then by the end he's like. He's like screaming. He's like this drill sergeant. All of a sudden, <laughs> it's like, man, he can really uh, switch on a dime. I don't want. I don't know if I want to mess with this guy. <laughs> but uh, getting the getting the work alongside um, him and then uh, Larry, who is who is the asshole counselor in the yep. in the episode. Oh, um, and then uh, he did a great job doing that though, because I remember as a kid, I'm like, <laughs> I, I was like, you know, Billy the heroic character. You know, you got behind the whole time. Every scene with Larry, you're like, God, just punch him in the face, Billy. Punch oh. him, punch him in the well, face. I just remembered they're like, Man. they're just like. That's how good he was at being a jerk, though. Like, it's just like a kid got mauled by a monster, and then he's like, why'd you, what, why you do it at your tents? He's like, did you not just hear it? Or like, there's a snake in the cabin, and he's like, why'd you throw a sheet out the window? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Was scary. That cabin was, was freaky. I think second day in, we did interior cabin stuff, and they, they dressed that up thing pretty good because mm -hmm. uh, i think i think it was a, it was an actual i mean not abandoned cabin but i think it was uh it was in some sort of like a provincial park so it w was you know not really used very often but obviously they dressed it up and they did a really good job that thing was pretty pretty eerie mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. well yeah even like at yeah, night i mean you have i mean summer camps are fun. camps are always i mean you got like friday the 13th and all that so you have camps can be scary at night and like you're in the middle of the woods, uh, there's like no one for miles. I'm, I, at least you're hoping there isn't. <laughs> I, I would certainly hope so. Um, but then you got that forbidden bunk. They talk about the forbidden bunk, and it's just this right. this creepy looking cabin. It's got like moss hanging off it, and like mm -hmm. that thing at night is super creepy looking. So I I believe it. Yeah. And. Movie uh, magic. Yeah, absolutely. It's like <laughs> the best part of movie making is getting to make something look really, really scary and yeah. some things you can really pull yeah, off. It's, it's, it's one of those things from the book that I always I remember thinking like really hard on. And when I saw the episode, I was just like, damn, like they did justice to that. Like it's exactly how I imagined it would look from the book. And um, actually, that was one of my questions. Did you read the book before shooting the episode? I don't think so I, you know, it, it it happened so quick. You know, I remember they sent the script pretty fast. So that's you know, you know, yeah. it read yeah. that and prep, of course. And, you know, and then next thing you know, you're on a plane, you're out there in Toronto and, and whatnot. So again, it was it was early in. You know, like I didn't, um, we didn't really know anything about this show. We just knew like it was this new show that was out, in, you know, in, in Toronto, and it was similar to Are You Afraid of the Dark? Mm -hmm. And uh, um yeah it's uh <laughs> it's like you know you're on a plane all of a sudden you're out there you're filming you know i'm i think i was 16 years old i want to say i was 16 years old when uh, when we shot it um but the uh the book no and then i know later on they redid the book because i was at a uh was it like a cbs pharmacy when i was 18 and all of a sudden there's the goosebumps book with my face on it and i was like what is that? oh yeah so yeah this one i assume yep that's the one yep that's the one yeah this was uh so these were the books that came out after uh the episodes would air and they were essentially abridged versions of the original book so the original book is like an actual chapter book uh and then you had these ones and these ones were sort of like like how a movie novel is so it, it takes the movie and then it writes down the movie as it is so this one's kind of different from the book uh but right. yeah and then this one also had like the pictures on the inside so you yeah. got to see like stuff from the episode like all that stuff yeah. so that was pretty cool um it's actually the only tv presents book that's a two-parter one because all the other tv presents books are just like the 20 minute episodes so mm -hmm. I believe you're this right. is the only one that's part of it is actually the two-parter so it's it's crazy to think out of all of them like you know but 
as a kid, it was always my favorite episode. And even like, for instance, the VHS tape was only released in the UK. Mm -hmm. I got my yeah. own though. <laughs> this is the, this is a custom I had someone make for me, but I got my own though. Um, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about. Uh, so we already talked about. So what was it like getting to act alongside some of these people, some of these pretty eccentric characters uh, like Uncle Al? Like were they were they pretty nice people on set? Oh, everyone was great. Yeah, everyone was super nice. Um, you know, uh, it, it was a pretty tight work schedule from what I remember, you know. Um, and and so, uh, you know, again, on breaks, sitting there drinking Jolt Cola, maybe having a cigar. Um, a lot of fun on the shoot. Unfortunately, it was, it was like the first time I went solo without my mom uh, being there. And to this day, you know, I regret not taking more photos on set because you know when I was a kid she was always on set and she was always taking a ton of photos and so I have all these great photos of, of all the stuff I did when I was younger but because I was by myself and you know the work schedule and everything else I didn't think to, to be snapping all these photos and whatnot so I'm, I'm kind of bummed that I didn't get more um, I do love that photo of me with the beast I don't even know who snapped <laughs> that one or how I got a copy of it yeah, but, um, yeah that's like that yeah. is a great one uh, yeah yeah, that's awesome photo. <laughs> it's a, it's just such a like perfect photo in my opinion. Like they could have just slapped that on the cover of the TV Presents book and like it would have been the greatest thing ever. <laughs> yeah. Just would have been just really out of context. Is like I didn't think that's how the story would go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, love, I love the 90s. Hair, my 90s, uh, my 90s. Oh, yeah. my, <laughs> the, the, would you consider it a bowl cut? Mushroom? <laughs> Isn't that the mushroom cut? I don't know. No, it's it's kind of like a. I don't, I don't know why I was always parting my hair in the middle, but. <laughs> uh, John, from, what I, from what I, from what uh, I was I mean, told, you look at anything else because I grew up in the '90s, so that, <laughs> I had the same hair, dude. I mean, like, yeah. When you look at it now, it looks like McDonald's arches. You know what I mean? When you put on here and there. But, yeah, you know, pretty uh, extreme. The John Taylor Thomas <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, uh, the, the whole was great. You know, we hung out a little, a little bit outside of uh, of filming um, when we had the opportunity. I think that was probably over a weekend or something, because um, otherwise, you know, it was a pretty tight schedule. And I'm back to the hotel. Um, I think it was Colin and I. I went to his house uh, over the weekend because his mom like came to pick him up, and you know come stay with us for the weekend okay great so you know had a chance to, to bond with everybody a little bit which was which was good and well, they were great they were all great at their characters you know it was cast very appropriately you know um not that they actually behaved you know uh, that way, but uh, you know uh, are you sure that roger didn't have bad bo <laughs> well that's funny too because you you had the you had these characters like with distinct personalities so you had uh, obviously your Billy. Billy's just straight man. He's he's the one who's kind of like interacting with everything before things start you know going south. But then you have all these other kids. So you have you have uh, Roger, who's like the jokester of the group. He's almost like he's kind of like the Richie of the of this like group of kids. Um, and then you got. Uh, you got Colin. He's kind of like the excitable yeah. one. He's like the one who's like, "Come on, man, let's go do this." It's like we're gonna go out in the middle of the night and like go to the Forbidden Bunk. Yeah. Uh, and then you got uh, God. I can't remember the the tall kid. The Jay. Jay. Jay yeah. So oh, Jay, Jay. Colin was the tall one. Oh, Colin was the tall one. Yeah. So Jay. Jay was. Yeah. Was the, was yeah the, and then Colin was the, the tall the, one. The yeah. Yep. Yeah, so switch them. Yeah. Colin was the tall guy, and he's the guy who's kind of like. He's like leaning up against stuff. He's like, oh, this is kind of cool. And then he gets his head like hit with a baseball. <laughs> and then he just changes. He's just kind of like, he's kind of like, oh, oh. <laughs> he's in like that sleeping bag. Yeah. I always love the, when they're like, so okay. How long did it actually take you to, to film the whole thing? Since talking with Alan and Matt, we learned that Goosebumps not only is shot very quickly like they had to make props quickly too i mean like they were always on a time crunch working crazy hours yeah. so was that the same for filming was it just crazy hours all the time or did you pretty much have a set time of hours and it went pretty pretty quickly uh, i think it was it was definitely crunch you know i mean you have to realize too like back in the day you're you're uh, shooting on film and so you know the old saying time is muddy and so you only have a few 
takes like nowadays with digital you know they can fix so much in post you can do a billion takes because it doesn't cost anything but back in the day you know you were only afforded like two three takes uh, um, usually um, obviously I think it was a tighter schedule than seven days but you, you know usually like an hour-long episodic would be about seven days but since this was a two-part I think we may be shot for 14 days in total 10 or something because it would have been a full hour long I don't think but you know it was uh, it was a tight schedule you know you're you're crunching down you know you got uh, limited time limited light mm -hmm. you know what yeah, was uh that's true. what was probably your favorite scene to to film in the episode do you remember uh Either the, the reveal at the end, because I, I, I think we actually shot that last. If I remember correctly, that was that was on like the last day. So it was kind of an appropriate way to end the episode and, <laughs> and my time on. Um, but that was fun because I think everyone was together, you know. So, you know, a lot of times you do scenes, but half the cast is gone. They're back home. They're not in that day because, you know, they're not in the scenes. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to kind of have everybody together uh, for the finale, as it were, you know. Mm -hmm. That would probably be what yeah. Do you yeah. still talk to anybody from the yeah, episode besides uh, Ron, who you mentioned earlier? We're still trying to get Ron on here too. So Ron, <laughs> we're always we're always trying to get folks involved with the show on board. So if you're watching, <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, I, I haven't I haven't talked to anybody in in years and years and years. Um, mm. I won't reveal how old I am now, but uh, yeah, it was shot a long a long time ago. And plus, you know, most of them were out in Toronto anyways. So you know, right. yeah. yeah. But we kept in touch. A lot of us kept in touch after the uh, after we shot the show for for quite some time. That's yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Did you get to keep anything like from that? Maybe we can do a big reunion, you know? Like, hey, yeah, like absolutely. Like, I'd love to do a reunion yeah. episode. Get the whole, get all the kids back together. The whole, the the camp gang. Yeah. <laughs> that would well, be great. You know, that would actually be amazing. The thing about Goosebumps is is, you know, I've been acting for thirty something years now, and out of everything that I've done, I get more fan mail i get more messages and i i over goosebumps than anything else i've done which is crazy wow. and it's it's nice because the people that grew up with it are now essentially my age and so they've now introduced it to their kids so like there's this whole new generation of goosebumps fans so when i'm at a convention or, or when i'm out and, and someone starts talking to me about the show you know they've now got their kid with with them who's equally excited because they've just seen it recently for the first time so <laughs> it's it's really quite cool and I, I i quite enjoy it actually yeah absolutely yeah, yeah, i mean possibly. we we've mentioned this uh in past episode but it's just incredible like how popular a show can get like Especially over the course of time, and yeah, I mean, this show has got a massive cult following, and then of course there's dedicated fans like we are, <laughs> who, who eat this show up. So, <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, it's just, I mean, it 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 is incredible, and uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that ending, uh, because so uh, in, in, in the, it's the same as the book, and it's one of the most infamous Goosebumps endings of all time because of how out of left field it is the whole camp is not only a military training camp if that weren't enough they're not even humans they're on a different planet and they're getting ready to go <laughs> to earth and it's uh, right there it's up in the sky <laughs> what was your reaction to that ending like going into it I'm, I'm assuming you probably read the script but like what was your reaction that that was the ending of the show I think I think I was like this is a kid's show. Are kids going to kind of understand? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but again, yeah, I think a lot of those shows were kind of ahead of their time in terms of, you know, the scare factor and the maturity. Yeah. You know, they, they didn't walk down, you know, like like they might do a little bit now with, with shows. Mm -hmm. So. Well, well they're very uh, down yeah. nowadays. I mean, I have a, I have a daughter and when she started, you know, getting older and watching shows, I'm like, what, 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 what is this? It's like, no, no, here, here's Goosebumps, here's this, here's this. It's like, you need to watch this. I was like, this, this is this so is the stuff than... I grew up on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. even like 20, like, like 2000, so like, like, there was even like, only like the shows from like kids from like from 2000 to 2010, like the 2010s and stuff, like the animated shows, like Ben 10, 
Gravity Falls, like those shows that weren't afraid to get dark and pretty mature for or like the original Teen Titans. Like it's crazy when you see those kind of shows because you know those there's no way those would exist nowadays. And when they do, they are rooted into these really like bad, super safe, kid friendly shows that just are not good in the slightest bit. Well, that's the thing too. I mean, this episode, this episode in particular, I think gets really tense by the end because again, so there's not really much of like the supernatural element. There is kind of a monster in the back, but that's kind of a background thing. It's more just about what is going on with this camp. And then all of a sudden there's, so on top of all the missing campers, you've got like these all of a sudden it's like a military camp all of a sudden and everybody's like being lined up they're like giving them like tranquilizer guns they're like you need to shoot on site and he's like what are you talking about <laughs> is like why are we gonna go around shooting people now and like it gets pretty tense because so you're standing there did you think going into this episode that you were going to be standing there holding someone at at arrow point <laughs> The crossbow. But the crossbow yeah. by the end. And these, are, uh, like, they said tranquilize it, but you're, I mean, this is like, uh, shoot to kill, almost. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, that's a pretty tense scene, because it's not until afterwards, and you shoot him. You do shoot him. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but then it's like, but then it's all revealed that it's all fake. But it's like, as a kid, you're probably like, oh my god, <laughs> he's gonna shoot that guy. Like, and like in the book, it's even more intense because I think in the book there were, there were rifles <laughs> in the original book. Yeah, they were yeah, real they rifles. Were. They had to tone it down for TV, but they were real I'm guns. Say, can't, can't, can't even do that in the '90s, you know. That that was even at the time, uh, <laughs> you know, like married with children was getting away with a lot of stuff, but. A 90s kid show, and uh, we'll have to switch to like, you know, if I remember right, looking at that scene, that, that dart or arrow looked like it had one of those suction cup ends on it at one point. Mm hmm. No, it's probably, it's probably just for the illusion. But, um, but no, I, I just. don't want to shoot with real, but yeah. Well, yeah, don't shoot yeah. him with a real arrow. It'd be realistic, but you'd probably have fees to pay. Yeah, a little size with what, what you can get away with back then, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Like we said, they just don't build shows the same way. And then mm -hmm. seeing something now, you're like, wow, those were pretty, pretty adult. And I do remember playing around with the crossbow going like, this is cool. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Ma. <laughs> that should have been oh, a picture. Man. That should have been a picture you took and sent back to your mom. I was like, Look, Mom. <laughs> Look what I got! <laughs> you wouldn't believe what I've been doing today. <laughs> like one of the things I've always wanted to know was, did you get to keep anything from set? Like, did they give you anything, like as a gift, or did you take anything from set? <laughs> I, 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 the only thing I, I took was my socks, um, and I take socks on my last day of every show I've ever done. Um, because when I did MacGyver when I was eight years old or something like that, I must have been about eight, um, on the very last day, I accidentally took, you know, my, my wardrobe socks home. And my mom, like, freaked out and made this huge production about, like, we got to get these socks back to them. Like, we can't just steal socks. We're not socks stealers. we got to return them. And I'm like, well, it's a pair of socks. And she was so disturbed by, by the fact that we had mistakenly taken these socks home. So now... And ever since then, I've been like, oh, last day, I'm going to take my socks. So I have, like, a, bin, a, like, a big Oh, tote. man. Socks. That's awesome. Uh, uh, just have, like, the, like, the, like the, the crew just knocking at your door and be like, all right, we need the socks back. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we've been patient, we've been, we've been polite, we've been kind, but we're going to need those socks back. And if you don't, there's going to be some trouble. <laughs> man. Now I, I give them away. I donate them because, like, I'll find these bins with all my scripts and everything else. Of, of and then there's all these socks. So I'm like, what am I ever gonna do with these socks? So, but admittedly, I still do steal my socks. Uh, every show I do. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, so That's you, incredible. Do, you do keep uh, scripts, though, right? I mean, is that? I keep, yeah. I, I keep. Uh, I had multiple Goosebumps uh, scripts, and I think I've given away all my duplicates. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, keep, I do for myself. I've kept a copy of every script of everything I've I've done. Um, the, I didn't steal anything from set on Goosebumps, uh, but they did give me a really cool Goosebumps backpack, which I also came across recently when I was going through stuff in the garage. That's pretty cool. Wow. That's really That's, neat. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we, so yeah, very unique gift. I mean, we had um, when we had Alan and Matt on. I know they did like a little mini bus for the cast and crew for the Haunted Mask because that was the first episode that aired or, or what have you. Mm-hmm. I kind of wondered if other episodes did that too, so I'm glad he asked that question because I was kind of wondering if like you get to keep scripts because you see scripts online that are signed by cast. Now I haven't seen a Welcome to Camp Nightmare one or anything, but um, you know Bjorn and I have a script from certain episodes and stuff like that, and you always wonder the authenticity. Like, were these really scripts? You know, did they make multiple? You know, for things like that? Because I, I just kind of think sure. most of them probably got thrown away. Um, or put in a vault somewhere in the Fox Studios or something, you know, at the mm-hmm. time. No, they, uh, I mean, oftentimes, the, you know, you do throw away a lot of the pages because you'll get the revisions, right? So you take out, you know, um, the pages that are revised and you just sort of chuck them and then you add the new ones. Um, it, you know, next time I'm digging through my stuff, if I find a duplicate um, Goosebumps script, uh, I'd be happy to send it to you guys because... Uh, oh. um, <laughs> for a while, I had a bunch of the books, um, but then I also signed and gave away most of those, except for maybe uh, a copy for myself, you know. But uh, if I find them, find an extra set of scripts, I'll send them to you guys. Happy. Ooh, that'd be cool. Oh, oh, you're amazing, dude. I mean, that'd be awesome. I, I guess this is where I should say, like, growing up, I've been a massive fan of you. Uh, you were like the hero to me in Goosebumps of all the protagonists and uh, my dream has always been to get this VHS tape signed <laughs> send me the sleeve I'll sign it and, uh, and send it back to you Ooh. oh really? oh dude <laughs> you're amazing that would, that would be a big dream come true like actual dream come true like cause they only released this in the UK but some stores in Australia back in the day ended up like importing it because like, it was just obviously when Goosebumps during its hype was just on such big demand um, they're like wait yeah. there's another Goosebumps tape out there like of Camp Nightmare oh we have to get this so a lot of the stores around here actually ended up just like importing it so I just came across it one day and was like oh my god there was a, a VHS tape for Welcome to Camp Nightmare like this is crazy because it's always been my favorite episode growing up so yeah I know oh dude that would be a dream come true amazing thank you yeah, yeah I'll shoot you the address. Send it. Send it to me. I'd, I'd be happy to sign it. Send it back. Absolutely, that'd be oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Bjorn <laughs> is really, really happy right now. <laughs> Dude, I'm, fan, I'm fan girl in this interview, man. I'm. I'm <laughs> Alrighty. Well, we're gonna continue our discussion with Kai here in just a moment. But first, uh, just a couple things. Number one, if you guys enjoy what we do here at the Goosebumps Crew and you want to see more from us, uh, definitely go check out our uh, our media network, uh, our Arate podcast media network uh we belong to them and they have a whole host of different podcasts with a bunch of like-minded people who voice their uh their opinions on stuff that they love whether it be pop culture media whatever it may be and uh, they have many other podcasts including uh the arate podcast average intelligence down the middle toon talk 2.0 party of broadway world and spur of the moment and of course we got us the goosebumps crew over on there too uh but if you guys like what we do at the goosebumps crew and you want to support some other like-minded people who are trying to get their podcasts up and going go check out rtpodcastmedia.org and uh give them a give them a follow give them a listen because they really do deserve it and uh before we continue our discussion we have a quick word from our sponsor this episode is sponsored by stevie wicks candle company It's a well-known fact that everyone loves a good-smelling candle every now and then. Stevie Wicks has you covered, as they specialize in quality-made scented candles. Not only do they have a large array of scents to choose from, but because Stevie Wicks candles are made from biodegradable soy-based wax, their candles burn slower and last longer. And if that wasn't enough, Stevie Wicks not only sells single and three-wick candles, but they even sell jewelry, making Stevie Wicks a great place to get gifts for someone you know, and their monthly subscription boxes make for a gift that keeps on giving all year long. If you're a fan of Goosebumps like we are and are in the mood for some spooky smelling scents, they also have a selection for those who dabble in the supernatural, including Dragon's Blood, Witch's Brew, and Candy Corn. And Goosebumps Crew listeners have access to a very special deal. If you sign up for Stevie Wicks' monthly subscription box and use promo code LISTENERBEWARE at checkout, not only will you get 10% off your first month, but Stevie Wicks will make sure your box is filled with Halloween-themed scents no matter the time of year. But wait, there's more! 
If you use promo code HAUNTED20 when purchasing your first subscription box, you'll get 20% off your first month. Or if you just want to snag something specific for yourself or a friend, you can use promo code SLAPPY10 to get 10% off any order. So what are you waiting for? Go to StevieWicks.com or click the link in the description to go snag yourself some quality made candles and snag some deals with our special Goosebumps promo codes. And of course, thanks to Stevie Wicks Candle Company for sponsoring this episode. And now, back to more Goosebumps. I go to conventions around here, but like mm-hmm. I haven't seen you pop up. Do you just do like local conventions where, where you're at? Uh, no, I've, I've traveled for them. One of my favorite ones uh, was out in London that I went to because, you know, I, I just I like traveling for work in general. It's for me, it's like a paid vacation. And I, I you know, it was just a three day event in London, but I stayed on for like a week afterwards just to explore because I'd never been. Um, so uh, it, it just depends. It depends on the show. And unfortunately, as, as shows get older, you know, there's, you know, people sort of forget about them and there's less uh, demand for, for convention stuff because, you know, it's usually the more current and whatnot. But, mm. you know, I don't know. I wouldn't be, you know, Goosebumps has this big resurgence lately. So, yeah, you know, yeah. they, they might start doing conventions and, uh, yeah, they're, they're quite fun. It's, yeah. it's a nice chance to meet people, you know. And, and uh, like I said, you know, I, I, I had some books that I was signing at a convention years ago and, um, you know this this mother who had grown up with the show was there with her son and you know it's just nice seeing like you know the people that were my age you know now having children and and their children are watching the show and you know it's 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 endearing it's sweet oh yeah i, I guess this is what i should probably, probably say yeah uh, there has been a major resurgence uh yeah. in the past five years and even the conventions i go to um you know a lot of people i talk to you know i have goosebumps stuff usually when i go to conventions on me yeah you know and you know that's the first thing they point out like oh i love that show and da da da. And i was like yeah i know i was like i wish they would get some actors around here from that show yeah. mm. and it's been a <laughs> yeah. big talk lately of trying to i think do that because like sa- I, I hate saying it because it makes me old too but goosebumps has like now gotten to like the nostalgic point like i think it next year is its 30th anniversary for the show yeah so yeah, we've already reached the uh, 30th anniversary for the books. So. The, the, the 90s nostalgia. Now I'm starting to follow all these 90s nostalgic, uh, you know, uh, Twitter accounts and Instagram accounts. And exactly. Just... <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's just it's crazy. I mean, honestly, and to be incredibly honest, Nick's the only one that's grown up in the 90s. The rest of us are 2000s babies. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, I, was, I was the tail end. We're frauds. The tail end of it. Nin- 99, 2000 was where I kind of caught goosebumps. Like I was watching the reruns, but then I had like my older siblings, my cousins and stuff. And it's like you yeah. said before, like introducing, you know, your kids to it. Like for me, like I've only got nieces. So the, uh, I'm not going to lie. When she turned five, she was watching like Baby Shark and like the Wiggles and stuff. And I came into the room one day and I was just like, no, 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 you're not watching this. And I turned that off. <laughs> and I put goosebumps on straight away and was like, now, we're going to teach you young. And my sister is very, very mad at me. She hates me for that. And I, like, took, I put, like, some goosebump books, like, on her bookshelf, like, them on there. And I was like, maybe she'll just discover these and start reading them. So, yeah. you got to teach no, them young, man. No, my, my sisters were the, my sister were the I mean, same I way. Have, when I, have, oh, I mean, yeah, when I have kids someday, I plan to show them goosebumps and stuff. And oh, show me too. them all those things. So, like. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was a gateway. Uh drug to horror if you want to put it in those terms for a lot of kids myself included mm-hmm. and it was the same thing with my daughter she's huge horror stuff and she does conventions with me you know when we go to them yeah. and stuff um it's it's funny to see that that's where it transitioned to like a love of horror comes from those 90s shows mm-hmm. and then you pass it on like you said and then you know now there's just it's more than one generation out there that you know, definitely would love to meet you guys in person and yeah. hear these stories uh, of your time working with the show, the actors, yeah. things like that. I mean, because even when we talked with Alan and Matt the last episode, they talked to us about Camp Nightmare and about Saber, the mechanical prop, and how it always went cross-eyed and yeah. like all these other, <laughs> like how they had a person inside of Saber uh, to, to to move it yeah. and stuff. And uh, so it was interesting to hear all this stuff because there's no behind the scenes, there's no like featurettes nothing from that show yeah so 
it's weird. Yeah, talking to you guys is like literally the only way that we get to find out anything that happened on behind the scenes. I think there was only one yeah. there was only one episode that ever had any sort of behind the scenes thing, as that was a Night in Terror Tower. Night and Terror um, Tower. Yeah. But uh, but no, everything else it's like it's a complete mystery. So honestly, the chance to get to talk to you or anyone from the show is always a treat for us because we get to learn about the stuff that goes on behind the scenes and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. have to. I'm gonna have to take a closer look at the book because I, I, I can't remember if they had a stills photographer on set. I feel like the pictures in the book aren't of the greatest quality, and they might have just pulled them off of you know screen caps. Um, yeah, they're they're mostly like, screen caps from the episode. Yeah. They're not really. There's not really a lot of like you can tell. Like the the yeah. the picture quality is pretty fuzzy overall. It's kind of just like yeah. stuff from the episode. Um, and I don't know if they're all like this. Like this one, this one's a little like clear. So maybe that was a set, a set photo or something like that. But you know, back then they just they didn't document stuff as much. I don't think they thought that you know anyone would be interested in behind the scenes, you know, featurettes and things like that. And you know, the show also didn't have a huge, huge budget. So if they had a stills photographer come out, it might have been for like a day or out of the cast in, so they could pop off a lot of shots but you know you get on some of the bigger shows and you know it feels like they have a stills photographer there almost every day snapping photos so you know yeah. or were they you know behind the camera crews filming you know behind the scenes stuff because now like people are curious now there's a, a need for it but back then mm -hmm. i didn't think they you know the show was also so new like had they known it was going to catch on like this then i'm sure they would have done a lot of behind the scenes stuff well, and even like, yeah. even as we talked with in the last episode, we talked about how there's still no full series release of the of this show. It's only yeah. been like uh, the DVDs with like one or two episodes on them. But there hasn't been, and even like it's it's confusing now because because of all this '90s nostalgia and a lot of shows who are are getting like big blu-ray releases it's like this show still has nothing so uh, yeah. we're hoping that something changes in the future again i mean this this show is going to be turning 30 uh i think yeah. next year so hopefully yeah. we get something for that but uh until then i mean we we appreciate being able to just talk about this at all and hear about stuff from behind the scenes um, 30 years old, that's, yeah, that's 30 years ago, that's making me feel old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, the episode, and uh, the earlier we were talking a little bit about Saber. Uh, so this is the monster of the episode. Again, not a big part of the episode, but it's there. Um, mm -hmm. What was it like getting to work with that, that large, beastie monster thing on set? <laughs> you know, it, it looks... It looks pretty good in pictures and on screen, but I remember thinking it looked kind of cheesy, you know, and, and you know, that's when you're filming, like, you know, I mean, I was like 16 at the time, so I was, you know, I didn't get scared easily by things, but I, I think I was desensitized to horror and things like that, uh, or I think probably working on Friday the 13th was something that made me go, uh, you know, it's all, you know, just phony and fake, and so it's, you know... It desensitizes you maybe a little bit. I remember, you know, yeah. again, because, you know, they had to, you know, it's no CGI. They had to actually manually move this thing and make it make it work and stuff. So it, it required uh, a lot of takes and stuff to get it right, because anytime you're working with something like that, you know, it's it's a little bit tricky. Yeah. Well, and it's funny, too, because as we said before, when we were talking to uh, Alan and Matt, Alan was the, uh, Alan Doucette is the series prop master. We interviewed him in our last episode. Uh, he was, yeah, he was talking about how it would go, the animatronic would go cross-eyed. So that was probably like, eh, it kind of brings the scare factor down just a few notches. Working <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, with the combination of like the animatronics and then people moving it as well. So in yeah, the there's suit, a lot yeah. to go wrong you know yeah. yeah yeah no that was it, it, it's but it's i mean like it's cool and it's like in at night when you can't really see all the imperfections but yeah in the daytime when you you see it full blast and it's like there's that one shot where it's like right in the screen it's kind of like yeah see that budget's kind of showing there <laughs> oh, you know and that, that's why i was surprised because uh, you know that monster in are you afraid of the dark i was like oh well that, that's where the budget went <laughs> <laughs> definitely I think it's pretty darn scary. oh man oh, i mean that dude. show probably blew most of its budget on its prosthetics and makeup effects because those things look 
Woof. <laughs> Dude, that episode traumatized me as a kid. Absolutely traumatized me. Like, I remember seeing it with my cousins in New Zealand when I was like four or five. And I remember I cried. Like, I couldn't go to sleep. Like, my parents were like, no, no, come on, go to bed. And I was like, no, I, I can't go to bed. I can't. Like, I, I was literally traumatized. And my, my cousin Nick would always come into my room and he was the older 15, 16 year old cousin. And he's like, Dead man's flute's gonna get you. Like, and used to, like, always do that. like, dude, like, just stop, you know. And this is me, like, as a four year old kid. And uh, yeah, and the scene that I remember the most for some reason that always stuck with me wasn't even so much the actual creature when he's revealed. It's when, like, they, they, uh, they go into the room where the pool is and you see, yeah. like, like a body almost like lift up out of the water because yeah. there's like the, the carp over the top. And you just see the body kind of lift up and then go back down. And, Things like that just stick with me in shows, and yeah. oh, dude, that one. Just, or even like it got me. Yeah. Or even in the opening, the opening scene of the episode literally shows a kid being drowned. Like. Yeah. Oh, those, those yeah. Shows were scary back in the day. Mm -hmm. they, they were scary. You know, the only thing that scared me, you know, because it's almost kind of sad. Like, you know, when you're an actor, you do get desensitized because you see how these things work behind the scenes, and you're filming these long, grueling hours, and so you're not really terrified by any of it because you see how it's all done and so it kind of ruins a bit of the you know the mystery of, of things but I remember um, when I was young watching Twin Peaks with with my parents and uh, and I couldn't go look in the mirror afterwards for those episodes where like Leland turned into to Bob and, and and you know and when he looked in the mirror it scared the hell out of me as a kid I was like, uh, uh I wouldn't go upstairs and like brush my teeth because I, I didn't want to go in the bathroom. <laughs> we have kids who grew yeah, up watching like really well, but... Tales from the Crypt and all that. It's like that. No, you want some hardcore anthology stuff? You go to Tales from the Crypt because holy yep. moly, that was premium cable. So you had like, you you had people getting chopped up with chainsaws all day long. <laughs> yep. No. It's like different breed of shows back then. Kids are wimps these days, you know. Come yeah, on. It just yeah. you don't need many. Like, yeah. Even like you know what? Because like I said, I didn't. I me personally, I was I was two thousand one. I was born in two thousand one, so I missed all those shows when they were on the air. But even growing up, I mean, yeah. like there were still shows that were scary, like like Courage the Cowardly Dog or Billy and Mandy, like mm -hmm. on Cartoon Network. Like those shows were could get freaky at times. Um, even like Scooby Doo, and I love Scooby Doo. Uh, but like the original Scooby Doo, like could actually be kind of creepy sometimes. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, th th there's just something about old, old school kids horror that was way more scary than the stuff they try to do today. It's like, I don't know. It just yeah. doesn't seem like they push the envelope that much. Uh, yeah. Just too safe. I'm gonna say I, th this is where the old man portion of me comes in of this group <laughs> because when we're all like talking about this, I'm like, no. I was like, I watch Child's Play and. You know, Nightmare on Elm Street and everything, because I grew up in the 90s, so these movies were already out, so I'm watching all this as it, you know, unfolds in my life, because back then, you know, parents didn't really care what you watched. It wasn't so much like a, well, let me view this first. Well, my mom was watching this stuff, too, so that's why I was watching it. So, I like you said, yeah. I kind of sympathized yeah. to a lot of things, so th those didn't freak me out quite as much. Uh, but I will say, like, the only thing I think that's ever scared me so bad in my life was when I was watching Child's Play, and that's when my uncle hit under the bed. <laughs> he didn't tell me uh, before I started. <laughs> and then all I hear is, you want to play? Want to play, Nick? And I'm like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> and I looked over, and man, he scared the shit out of me. I've never, never been so scared in my life. But it, Real people are scarier than anything on the film, oh, let yeah. me tell you. So yeah. anything on true. the film doesn't really scare me anymore. I got desensitized by that pretty early. Well, they always yeah, say that. But I will say, like, The Ring, though, that's that's a whole nother, that's a that's a can of worms. I don't know if you ever saw that. but <laughs> No, but I did see the movie Can of Worms. <laughs> <laughs> don't go eat worms. Don't so. go yeah, like, eat worms. You're talking about all that, like, for me as a kid, the thing that always stuck with me was scary stories to tell in the dark. Like those books yeah, those and those illustrations by Stephen Gamble messed yeah. me up. Specifically the one of the pale lady from the dream where like she's like leaning over the bed and just looking at you with that creepy smile. She is still the reason I unashamedly sleep with my head under the covers to this day <laughs> as a habitual thing. Because as a kid, I would do it because I was so scared that I would just open my eyes in the middle of the night and just see her like standing at the side of my bed. Like... <laughs> 
Uh, it's just something I've never right. been able to shake. I don't know why, but I've never been able to shake that. It's, we're yeah, a bunch see, of. I, I can get creeped out by shows. I I don't get scared, but I can get creeped out. It's like The Shining with Jack Nicholson. Mm-hmm. But Jack Nicholson, man, like that dude. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh god. Like, yeah. See, thrill, thrillers, thrillers, thrillers creep me out, and and yeah. and. I like them because they, they mess with your mind. Whereas, like, when I see horror movies and things like that, it's always like, oh, yeah, I know how they did that. Like, oh, yeah. And, and so, yeah. so with, with horror movies, I think just because as a kid, it was like, yeah, hey, you know, doing Friday the 13th when I was, I think I was eight years old or something when I did that, eight ish, nine maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, and so, you, you know, here you are standing with your arm around Jason and your mom's taking pictures. And, <laughs> uh, and I lost that photo. I don't know where it is. And I'm really bummed out about that. Great photo of, of, of me with Jason. He's holding the machete in his hand, and, and I got my arm around him with a big smile on my face. And oh, I'm really bummed out. That's I've awesome. I can't find that photo anywhere. Man, that oh, would have been man. so cool. It, 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 it's somewhere buried. I mean, I, one thing I've got to ask you, just because recently my missus and I, we've been watching Criminal Minds, and mm. uh, we got to a certain episode, and I was like, oh, there's Kai. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I just got to ask, like, how, how did that come about? Criminal Minds. Um, I actually I remember that one pretty pretty vividly. I mean, a lot of these shows are, are you know I was, I was so much younger and I mean I can barely remember what I did last uh, last Friday, but um, <laughs> that one I remember very well. I remember um, during the audition, um, I waited for like over an hour uh, before I went into audition, and I find that you know when you have to wait a long time like that, like, obviously the energy kind of goes, and you're just like you know get sucked out of you a little bit and I remember going in to like a tiny trailer um, and it just packed with producers and people there were about 12 people in this hot tiny room and I remember they had me sitting down in a chair and it was the scene where I'm up on the top of the hill and holding the you know the girl hostage and yeah. um, and I'm just sitting in this chair and just feeling like ah, it's just not it's just not working and you know I'm supposed to be yelling or on the walkie-talkie down to them and yelling and it just it wasn't quite working so I, I remember just stopping in the middle of the audition being like you know what I'm gonna stand up for this and kind of kicking the chair out of the way and then we we read it again and um, you know and it felt much better and and uh, although you know like you never know you, you I, I sort of at a young age learned to just uh, not get too too attached obviously there's shows you want to book more than others but once you're done just kind of put it out of your brain and and move on and and I think they called within like 40 30 or 45 minutes to, to book me after I left the room and so I was like oh, great and, wow and then I going away for the weekend uh, for for my Dave Matthews concert and I remember bringing my script with me and feeling great because it's always nice to know that you're coming back to work and uh, you know and so I flew back from my concert and started work on the show the next day and uh, yeah that one was a lot of fun actually that was a good show yeah That's absolutely awesome. yeah no I absolutely love it great. So, it was nice to see you on there I was like oh I know who that is <laughs> <laughs> it's that meme is like hey I know it was that surprise to see you on there um getting back to the episode a little bit i do want to ask a few questions so um in the the first scene in the cabin so that's when you guys get set up is your first day at camp uh that was the scene when uh mike gets bit by the snake now what was, was that an actual snake on set with you guys no that would have been i have not that i re- remember I, it would have been probably a fake snake i mean couldn't CGI stuff back then. Yeah. No, I do know they had, like, just the single shot of the snake, and it kind of looks like you can't really see anything. I know you, you, you guys, like, bunch it in the blanket, you roll it up, and then you yeah. throw it out the window, but I was, like, curious, because sometimes they will get, like, the real thing on set, and then sometimes... I, I, I suppose a snake is probably yeah. too dangerous of an animal to have, especially around children. <laughs> yeah, they, they probably had a real one for the, for the shots that they needed. You know, any time we'd be working with something like that, I, I, I don't recall them using a, a real one. Yeah. Um, but back in the day, you know, like again, less less rules, and less safety. Yeah. <laughs> I when mean, Uncle hey. Al shows up, he fires that gun. Is, was that a real explosion on set when he fires that gun? Uh, that that was like there was that one shot. Yeah, it, it probably would have been blank stuff back. Like again, back then. Um, and I miss it. Like I missed when they did things and it was practical. Now it's all special effects. It's CGI. They can fix so much. And I was just talking about this the other day because I'm always 
amazed at how good a lot of these young kid actors are these days. And I'm like, they've got such great instinct and how the hell are they this good? And then I realized like when I was young, you know, they had to, you know, they would hold a tape measure to your eye and then to the mat box of the camera. So the focus puller would have to get the focus just right. And if you didn't hit your mark properly, ruined. You know, if another actor was like blocking your, your light that you were in a scene with, you'd have to learn to like lean in to, to get into your light. And, like, so you're acting, but you're thinking about all this technical stuff at the same time. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, and you were and you were super close to people, especially during like, you know, close ups, you're really close to your fellow actors. But now with with digital, you know, they can plunk four cameras down from all sorts of different angles and they can fix everything in post and the kids don't have to think about hitting marks you know for focus as much and these sort of things and so it gives them a lot more i think freedom to just kind of be natural and and to you know it it's, it must be nice sort of working under those conditions you know for them because you know back in the day it was a lot of you had to think of a lot of technical stuff at the you know at the same time as acting so absolutely i think the only thing that like i think they would have problems with nowadays but it doesn't seem to be an issue anymore because it's so commonly used are green screens and stuff because you don't have a practical you know there's no saber right in front of you to to act off of or anything no matter how cheesy it would look it's still there yeah you know you could, you could play on it but everything now is a green screen or like when you do see behind the scenes or a tennis like, ball say, on a like, stick uh, game, <laughs> when you see thanos well there's josh brolin but there's like a, a stick that's like 10 feet above his head with the Thanos face on yeah, it. Yeah, he goes up Everybody here, but up then Josh Brolin's like yeah. right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so you got to... Cool. It's, hard, it's hard for adult actors to have to work with that right. stuff, because that's right. never <laughs> natural and fun. So you can't have it both ways, right? But, yeah, yeah, that's, absolutely. Yeah, 22. Uh, oh, man, just got to... Like, yeah. And in this right. episode, um, you certainly got a lot of running in. I know they had you running in a lot of scenes. Uh, you would just be like, be. I know there's a whole shot, like, I think after Colin and Jay drown, you're just like running all across the canvas, just running and running and running and running. And then you, and then you stop and then Sabres are there and then you're running some more. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you were probably, that's why we needed all that Joel Cole. Yep. <laughs> Keep you active. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Get him another, get him another Jolt. <laughs> <laughs> no, as um, oh, heck, there's even a scene where you're you're running and you're carrying someone in a sleeping bag. <laughs> did you, did you oh, was there man. actually was Colin actually in that sleeping bag when you and Jay were carrying him? No, no, oh. but they, you know, they put some weight. Well, they put some weight and stuff to make yeah. it look realistic. You know, like you know, my fellow actors and I always joke around. Like when actors have a, a you know cup of coffee. Uh, in a scene, it always looks too light. Like you can tell it's just an empty <laughs> cup and it, it sort of drives us crazy. But, you know, no, they try to wait stuff to make it look real. I've got a great photo of him, by the way, in the sleeping bag with Ron and I. We got our arms around him and he's got a cigar in his mouth and he's in the sleeping bag. So we're all wrapped up in his head. Uh, so what of, what of the few photos I have from that shoot? I'm glad I got a couple. Oh, man. Yeah, absolutely. That's, That's hilarious. hilarious. Well, I was like... It was great. Spoken cigars. One thing I remember for some reason, I don't know why it always sticks with me, but like when Uncle Al points the girls in the direction to their side of the camp, the disappointment mm. on Billy's face, like <laughs> when you're like, damn it, I'll get in like, <laughs> I was just starting to like this girl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's another thing too. The <laughs> like, oh man, the, the, um... they had the forbidden bunk there, really. I mean, that's why it's probably called the Forbidden Bunk. Oh. oh it's like the make-out bunk or something. Oh, but we don't talk about that part of camp, though, do we? That's a that's a different franchise. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, nah, but... Um, no, uh, but I mean, obviously. So this episode aired many, 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 many years ago. Uh, have you rewatched it recently to just kind of be like, you know, like look back on when it was then? Have you rewatched the episode? I I hate watching myself, so I tend to not watch uh, watch stuff in general. If I if I flip through, you know, the only time I really watch myself is if I'm flipping through TV and something's on, and I'll be like, oh, and then I'm kind of curious to see, especially if it's an older show. I'm like, well, I remember that. I'll see, you know, because your your opinion of of the job you did changes, which again is why I don't like watching. You tend to be hard on yourself, or or you think like, why did they use that take? There was there was a much better one that I like better, but you know so you tend to be critical and i think that's why a lot of actors um 
don't watch themselves. But it is kind of nice with the older shows, you know, to revisit them and, and look at them in a different light when you're when you're older. And um, but that's about the only you know I don't ever seek out to to watch things. So I mean I probably saw Goosebumps at least five six years ago, and you know. I didn't see the full episodes. I just kind of, if it's on TV, it's like, oh, we're flipping through. Yeah. Um, I think it was on Netflix or something for a while, so I'd see the the promos for it, and that's always kind of kind of nice. But yeah, yeah, I don't I don't care to watch. I, you know, I I I'm curious about Friday the Thirteenth Part Eight because um, I I I quit, uh, got fired, and the union uh, pulled me out all at the same time. So I don't know if they used any of the footage that we shot or if they redid it with with the other kid so i'd be curious to see um i'm that's curious a, that's to see it too. That, that, that's more out of curiosity than anything else so. yeah no i'd be interested to see that too because i actually did not know you were in friday the 13th that's funny you were in two projects that both deal with deadly summer camps yeah. <laughs> what I, if i played baby jason yeah. Oh, you played. Oh, that's what really? you played. You played the the kid Jason. Yeah, oh. you couldn't really tell. I mean, well, at least the stuff that I shot, I had like crazy prosthetic, fake eye. Uh, back in the day, oh, so oh. glued to my head and a bald cap and all that. I'm um, curious. I do have now. a good picture from that. <laughs> oh, have to put it up on screen. So yeah. No, I. I'm curious to see that. I'll have to look into that. But no, that's that's funny. Yeah. That <laughs> that's really funny. Um, yeah, maybe one, maybe one of these days I'll watch it, see if any of my stuff uh, did make it into the film. Yeah, I would sure hope so. I mean, yeah, you'd want to filming brilliant. all that. You'd want it to at least appear. But uh, that's oh, pretty yeah. cool. That's really cool. Um, yeah, you know, and so low budget. I doubt they had the money to go back and, and redo the stuff that we um, we shot. I just think they continued the whatever they were missing with uh, a different kid. Yeah. So well, I mean, that particular movie uh, too was like they were already skipping their budget. I mean, they're in. They oh, yeah. were in uh, New York, and that's like one of the most expensive places to shoot. There's a famous story that they actually only had the scene, like I think, like the Times Square scene was like the only scene in that movie that they could actually film in New York, and everything else had to be filmed in mm -hmm. Vancouver. I think, which is it's an it's an old movie trick, is like whenever you need to have a stand-in for New York, yeah. it's Vancouver because it's cheaper. Um, but no, I mean they were probably already yeah. already. And they, they just did a couple of the, the scenes out in New York. The rest of it was all uh, in Vancouver. Um, but it, before it was called Jason Takes Manhattan, it was called Ashes to Ashes. Friday the 13th, Part 8, Ashes to Ashes. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, it was uh, not not a great shoot. Not a great shoot. Uh, yeah, not a great movie. <laughs> yeah, no, there's always that joke online of people saying, this movie should have been called Jason Takes a Boat. Because it's <laughs> it's half the movie's on a boat. Movie. It's not, well, again, it's one scene yeah. in New York. Everything else is and either on a boat or in Vancouver. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's it's a it, that's a headache that one. But I'm I I didn't know that you actually were in that movie. That's uh, even, did, I I have to go see and see if your if your scenes are in there. Well, yeah, maybe one of the. I mean, like I said, I was in crazy prosthetics the whole time, so I don't know if uh, if I'd even be able to recognize myself if uh, if they still eat that footage. I can't imagine them going back and reshooting it though. Probably not. But you want to know the funny thing too though is that <laughs> one thing I always noticed about that movie is there's three scenes with ba with like kid Jason in th all three times. No, was it one, two, three, four times actually? All four times they're all different actors. All different kid actors and none of them want yeah. to say <laughs> well, like that's probably what happened exactly yeah. and it's like yeah. Yeah. i think the only scene like where they had a jason that looks like canonically because jason canonically is like he's a little deformed uh and the only scene that he looks like that is when he's underwater like there there's yeah. like a flashback and he's underwater and he's pulling on this little girl's leg the other times it's just some normal kid and that's mm -hmm. always been like a that's not what jason looks like what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah. So, side. That's a side mission. Well, I, me I remember having a bald cap and like a fake guy. I've got a good good picture of that one too. But, yeah. Uh, you probably yeah, would have been the style. one underwater. I would think. Yeah. We underwater stuff. So I, you know, uh, you know, I was eight or nine. Uh, but like I said, like I 
quit, I got fired, and the union pulled me out all at the same time because <laughs> it was like, I, and I I've heard these stories. I don't know if it's true, but I was told that the the child some of the child labor laws in in BC actually changed because of that because um, the union was not too happy with with uh, what what they were doing. And then I was also told that because of that, they weren't allowed to use another Canadian actor, so they had to use like the editor's son or something to finish the stuff. Um, but yeah, we did underwater stuff. I remember uh, um, they had me in full latex to make it look like I was you know, burned, so they would like paint it on and then like score it so that it would be marked, and then they'd color it in to make you look all all burned. And I, I remember they had like a cylinder. A swimming pool they had made probably about 10, 10 feet by 10 feet round maybe a little bit bigger um, and then on top of it it had like a tic-tac-toe board of metal bars and on, on, in the middle they had a piece of wood with like a boat porthole so then they would mount the camera on top of that so it would look like you're you know looking out into the water and I'd have to sink down wait for this light to come on to cue me and then I'd swim up to the top and like bang on the on the on the porthole and then I'd have to, you know, sink back down and then come up and around from this uh, metal uh, tic-tac-toe board, which I kept bonking my head on, and it was uh, <laughs> it was a whole big production. Yeah. And uh, so I remember doing the underwater stuff. Yeah. No, I think I, I know exactly what scene you're talking about, so I'll have to go back to that. Um, I guess to wrap up our thoughts on uh, – on the episode, though, getting back to we getting all kinds of subject. Uh, let's uh, get back to, to Goosebumps just a little more because we're going to talk. Uh, just give our final thoughts on the episode because uh, this is Welcome to Camp Nightmare is one of the episodes that people consider one of the best of the show. Um, it's uh, again, it was the first two parter. People say it's one of the best episodes. It's uh, it's a pretty unique episode because it's in a you it's a unique setting. Uh, it's kind of got this own style. I can't really think of a lot of other Goosebumps episodes that have like the really like loose, like loose camera where like it would just kind of tilt over and over again, especially in the scene where you're like running through the empty camp. Like it really yeah. sells that like feeling of like you don't know what's yeah. going on, you're lost. And like I just love that. I love how they shot that whole sequence. But, um, um, it's a really atmospheric episode, and it's always one uh, I go back to personally. Um, you but yeah, man, man. like as a, as a kid, like of all the Goosebumps episodes, like, like protagonists, like you were the hero character in my eyes. Yeah. Like of pretty much any episode I ever watched. So. I mean, are you you're yeah. one of the only no, Goosebumps I'm, protagonists that like really was like like getting like ready to get down with like. <laughs> Definitely. figuring some sure. stuff out you got like you were just like i need to figure out it's the whole sequence yeah. where you're like got the bat and you're just like walking yeah. around i'm like i'm i'm ready <laughs> like, oh, dude, it he, wasn't like when he points the, the crossbow to glow like which well, it's, it's oh, fun it, it, you know when when you're an actor you know like i said you're thinking about so much of the you know the technical stuff you know so you're not thinking like, oh, this is scary, or you're you're not overthinking it. You're just trying to, you know, make it realistic. And so, you know, I think because I was in that zone of being 16, 17, wanting to do more like mature stuff. I remember, you know, Kamish was really starting to, you know, import a lot of stuff from my own personal life because you know they watched me grow up on that show. So they were, you know, peppering in like stuff from my real life getting my ears pierced things like that like into the show <laughs> so i remember like stepping onto goosebumps and, and you know and going like i don't like i don't want to do a kid's show but when we're filming it it did you know it, it didn't feel like a kid's show it's you know between the technical aspect of like just trying to get it done and work through the script and your days and and you know all of that you know you're not you're just thinking like okay we're just going to shoot it as as real as we can and and try to do the best with you know but not thinking like not treating it like it's a kid's show yeah. you, you know same thing like when i do the hallmark projects i never treat them like they're kind of you know cheesy or sappy hallmarky movies like i treat them like it's a serious you know uh drama you know mm -hmm. and, and then you know once they're edit and they have all this fluttery music and if you know every scene looks like it's autumn it's like oh okay <laughs> you know, it, it has, it's amazing what editing can do it can totally change the the vibe of a, of a show but you know when we're shooting goosebumps we're not thinking you know it, it's a it's a kid's show but also back then you know like it's it's no joke like 
those shows were way scarier than anything that they would make for for kids that age now. Mm-hmm. So, oh well, yeah. So maybe it's we just no attack right. it in a different way, you know. Well, and again, going back to the whole thing where it's like, yeah, so everything's it's presumed death. So you have you have all these kids disappearing. You're assuming at first, if you don't know the ending going in, that these kids are are dead. They even talk about yeah. when uh, you meet up with the the girl character. There's like. One of the cam- one of our campers got like mauled by a bear, and it's like it's really violent, like sounding stuff. But then you find out at the end, so that like everyone's okay. But in almost in that sense, when you can be like everyone's fine, you can kind of skirt like the skirt the line of what's really too yeah. violent for yeah. a kids show. Um, but even then, I mean, like. It, you really like acted really really good in some scenes like especially that ending when you're holding that crossbow you're really yeah. like angry and upset and scared like I, I you need to tell me what's going on right now because you're like you're a liar you're a liar and he's like put that yeah. thing down billy's like i'm not gonna put it down mm-hmm. like th- th- you you really made that scene feel tense you like because you know, like it's, we're we're trying to shoot it like it's you know like it's a you know, or at least in my mind I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> I was trying to make it you know like like an adult show and and you know yeah I think with network you couldn't get away with if you didn't reveal that it was all a hoax and if you didn't wrap up what happened to the kids and all that stuff. Of course you couldn't get away with with it because that legitimately would be too scary. So like anytime something bad in these shows happens you know they definitely wrap it up to explain it because it's for it's for kids you can't you know um mm-hmm. y- you know there's there's certain rules i guess i i, <laughs> I remember I, I did an episode of macgyver and my family and i are in like this barn and it's being burned down with a flamethrower so it's all on fire and i remember we're hustling into it we're trying to get out and and i just sort of ad-libbed because i was like well damn barns on fire we got to get out and so i was like oh my god and then they cut and, and the script supervisor was like what did you say i'm like i i oh i was ad living and she's like did you say oh my god and i said yeah she goes you can't say oh my god on network television and i was like really she's like no 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 you cannot say oh my god on network television i went okay i, I didn't know so <laughs> You know, you watch a network show now, and it's like, what the yeah, way they're just like is. they're. Oh, it's like, I mean, they'll just like yeah. flash up. They'll just flash up the finger whenever they feel like it. <laughs> Drop the bomb or things like that. Yeah, there's no. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, that's, that's funny. About, like I remember watching um, an interview with uh, Dave Chappelle about his time on Chappelle Show, and he's like, "There's a particular lady who." runs all that for like you know I, I can't remember what it's called at the time it might have changed the name even but so it wouldn't be relevant but it's exactly what you're talking about it's a lady whose specific job is telling them what they can not say on television yeah he's like i was in that office every day <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, it's it's interesting to see like because he got away with a lot of stuff but that was also on cable yeah so network television I thought I had a bit more free range, so hearing you say like "Oh my God" couldn't be said. That was that's kind of interesting. I feel that one's pretty mild compared to other things I've heard on TV at the time. Yeah, well, there's also right. that infamous uh, George Carlin bit, which I will not recite, but you you probably know what it is. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's like um, or even like with film nowadays, like the one f bomb rule, where you have. You can say one f bomb in a PG thirteen movie, but any more than that, and it's an R rating. And it's like, oh, so kids yeah. are allowed to hear it once, but any more than that, and you're crossing a line. What well, is that oh, infamous story yeah, about the South right. Park movie where they couldn't use four hundred mm-hmm. swear words, or else they'd get an NC seventeen? So they used three hundred ninety nine, and they still got an R rating. <laughs> it's like, well, you, I guess that one, that one more swear would have just put it over yeah. the edge. <laughs> it would have been gone. But apparently, um, in Lord of the Rings. Uh, I was watching an interview with the the cast, and they said technically they were allowed one swear word in the film because it was yeah PG thirteen. They were allowed one, and they were trying to figure out which would have been the most perfect moment for like someone to throw an f bomb out there. And um, yeah, it was uh, right at the end when like he says throw it in the fire, and and Frodo just says. The ring is fucking mine. <laughs> that would have been the moment to say it. And I was yeah. like, damn, that would have been so cool. I but, hope that ring yeah. comes with soap for that mouth. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. That's what it would have been perfect for it. But, Anywho. Um, did you get approached for any other Goosebumps episodes? Or? I think he said no, that... It was the it was just the uh, the one. Oh, did my camera go crazy here? Hold on a second here. There we go. Oh, there, there we go. We go. <laughs> <laughs> no, you had. Uh, um, I think no, you said you were approached for one a... before Camp Nightmare, right? Yes, before before. Um, and it was nice that it, I didn't have to audition. They just offered it to me, which was you know was right, might have been the first time I had been offered something. And I just remember we didn't know anything about the show. They came to 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 us said you know. Does he want to do this? I, was, I just want to take a break, and you know, had been doing the commission for a whole season, and uh, and so we turned it down. And then I just remember they came back, and they're kind of like, "We got a good episode. It's two parts. We come do a two part episode." And I was like, "Yeah, I'll, I get to go to Toronto and <laughs> uh, and go by myself." I was like, "Okay, that sounds that sounds pretty fun." So yeah, did they even yeah. tell you like what the episode was about, or did they keep it a secret until you got there? They vaguely ex- explained it. You know, they. You know, because obviously I, I didn't audition, so I didn't have a script or much to, to go on or know about. So no, they they explained it, and and we went okay, hey, yeah, sure. And then they sent the old script over, and then you read it, and you're like, well, okay, this will be fun. This will be a good one. Yeah. It was the hair. It was the hair. They're like, they're like, he's got the, the undercut. It's he's perfect. Because <laughs> so many of the kid actors in Goosebumps, they all had that same look. Like they all had like that undercut hair, like baggy clothes. Yeah. I think it was just the look they were going. Even for. Ryan Gosling. The cover of some of the books. <laughs> Yep. Even yeah, Ryan Gosling had that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess the best place to to cap things off on is uh, just going back to that ending, uh, and I I think I can speak for all of us when I say that ending is one of the weirdest Goosebumps endings. And Goosebumps got some weird endings, uh, but this yeah. is one of the weirdest left out of field ones because yeah, again, not only is this a government testing facility, that's already weird enough as it is. But they're all aliens, <laughs> so no it's aliens. like, Not and it's like there's alien. no there's no build up to it. There's no foreshadowing. It's just a thing that happens, and mm. that's the note you're left out on. And it's not. It's yeah. like you don't even know like what their plan is because okay, so Billy finds out everything. Everything was fake. Everyone's okay. Like everything's fine, and then his parents are there. He's like, what? Like, and he even you're even like, I think I'm going crazy. <laughs> Like that's funny. It's oh, just like yeah. after all that, you're just like, okay, I think I'm, I think I've actually freaking lost it now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, and then they say that, and then they're like, yeah, it was like, well, where are we going? And he's like, we're going to a place called Earth. And it's yeah. like, what do they even plan to do when they get there? <laughs> are they gonna <laughs> invade? Or, like they don't even look that different from humans. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know. It's it's, it's pretty mature content. It's pretty mature content. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, man. Larry turned out to be a nice guy in the end. Well done, yeah. Billy. You did great. That was oh, weird. It's like, uh, that's probably the weirdest weird. part. Is like, why are you being nice to me? <laughs> What's well, funny? Because Uncle, like I said, Uncle Al is just such a. Whoever did the acting for him was incredible, but like after he gets shot and he's just like, "Congratulations, Billy." It's like. I would get like a shiver down my spine if that happened. I'm like, what? okay, you need to back up for a second there, dude, because what? <laughs> I don't know. That's uh, it's just such a good ending, and uh, no, I just, I, w- I mean, I was personally curious what you thought of it because it was just like such an out of left field thing. But um, I mean, hey, that's I mean, what. I- like I said, it was the last thing we shot, and I think that was a great way to wrap up the episode. You know, it was a, it was uh, it was a, a good last day. Yep, they had the whole crew there and yeah. everything. It was a great way to be like, well, that's a wrap. So, yeah, yeah, good ending to a good episode. So there ever a project that you got like it was kind of like I know we talked earlier about your Criminal Minds, and you know we've had Are You Afraid of the Dark and Friday the Thirteenth. Um, I mean, was there anything that really stood out like? Uh, you were obviously as an actor. I'm sure you. Whenever you get a job, it's mm. great because you know obviously you want to keep working. You want to keep building your craft. So was there ever though like one project that really like was out of your wheelhouse? I guess I should say that uh, you were happy to get because you got to play something out, out of the normal for yourself that you haven't really done before. Um, you know, like every every project's special in its own sort of way. Uh, there's definitely characters that I, I connected with more than others, and sh- and then shows that you just had a different experience on. You know, um, 
so it's it's hard to pick favorites some some that jump out like you know boston public was a, was a really special one to me 400 was really really special um with a lot of the like criminal minds and, and ncis's and things like that you know you're only there for like a week it's kind of quick in and out so um so the other shows that i've spent more time on tend to be you know close to the heart and in, in a lot of different ways yeah absolutely uh, cool. Well, I think that's going to do it for uh, tonight's episode of the Goosebumps Crew podcast. Uh, Kai, seriously, thank you for joining us tonight and uh, talking with us about the episode and yeah. uh, about your career. Absolutely. Uh, is there any place, uh, social media that you'd like to plug people can find yet? Uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm on uh, Instagram. I don't use Facebook very much anymore, but I, I should probably uh, hop on there. <laughs> uh, again and uh, say hello but uh, yeah Twitter Instagram awesome. I got a website but well, I'll next time that's gonna be <laughs> oh man thank you thank you for coming on you've made this Goosebumps uh, kids dream come true so. <laughs> <laughs> no we were very oh, man, it's amazing. absolutely no thank you so much and uh, certainly go uh, follow Kai on Instagram and Twitter if you can keep up to date uh, with him because he's an awesome guy and seriously thank you so much for coming on tonight Thanks, guys. Did you have any uh, future projects in person, sort of? No, uh, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, of course, as usual, follow my all my uh, Goosebumps cohorts, Bjorn Panic, Goosebumps Aussie fan, Nick Shaw Shaw, and Mike of the Ultimate Goosebumps man on their Twitters, YouTubes, Instagrams. They really, really do deserve it. And, of course, give us a sub over here at the Goosebumps channel if you want to keep up with future episodes of the Goosebumps Crew podcast and future Goosebumps videos. Uh, we got plenty more very special guests on the way. I do not want to give them away because they are secret for right now, but uh, if you like tonight's episode, we got plenty more of that came from so stay tuned uh and uh yeah give us a sub here with the goosebumps channel if you want to keep up on future episodes but until then this is the goosebumps crew podcast and we're gonna wish you to have a very scary day <laughs> <laughs>